I formally open this special town meeting and call it to order. I have determined that a quorum is present. Um, I've examined the return of the warrant as well and find it in order. Uh, at this point, we do have a, uh, a bit of housekeeping to start with. We don't currently have a town clerk, and uh, town meeting does require a clerk to be present, so we are going to uh, elect a clerk this evening. The select board makes that nomination, so would someone like to make that nomination? Sure. Uh, I nominate, nominate Kathleen Sanderell uh, Cassie to be our uh, temporary town clerk for purposes of special town meeting. Cassie's right down here in front. I uh, second that. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, it does have to be a ballot vote, so you were all handed ballots when you came in. If you could, if you were prepared to just hand in your ballot, someone will collect them. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a box coming down on that side. If you want to write in someone else, feel free, but otherwise the box is uh, over on the right and one coming down that I don't see. Oh, here it comes. Yep. So if you can pass them to the inside aisle and we can keep that moving, that'd be great. Yes. So unless you're writing in your own, you would just hand in the pink, and if you wanted to write in your own, you'd use the yellow. I wasn't aware there were two different ones. We'll take the box, sir. Is there anyone else who still would like to vote? Uh, over to uh, select person, McDaniel, please. the select board comfortable in their decision and their vote count? Yes. Yep. At this point, Cassie has been elected uh, our temporary clerk. Thank you. Uh, if we you. Uh, for those of you comfortable, if you could uh, please stand and we'll recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Direct yourselves to our uh, virtual flag on the <laughs> right-hand side. So I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I apologize for that. Um, as you've seen for the warrant, there is, uh, there's not a lot of articles, but there are some substantial articles on this evening, so we're going to work hard to respect each other and respect time. Uh, everyone that wants to speak should have an opportunity. Our, by our bylaws do say that you should not speak more than once unless anyone who would like to speak has already spoken, so please try to keep your comments uh, precise and on point when uh, you do come up. If you do wish to speak, 
If you can walk up to the mic, if you're able, if you're not, just raise your hand. When you're called on, if you can just state your name and your street address, um, that would be great. So, um, I just want to remind everyone that there are uh, two different concepts. There's the articles and the warrant. So the warrant is meant to put everyone on notice on what might be discussed this evening. The actual motions that you'll hear from the parties that make the motions, that's what you're voting on. So those are the precise issues that you actually will be deliberating on and voting on. So um, if you do wish to make any amendments, those do have to be in writing. There's a pad up here, so if you don't have anything with you, you'd come forward, write that up, and present that to me. Um, just, again, to understand process, uh, there are several committees in town that, that meet uh, on the articles before they're presented to you this evening, and they deliberate and also uh, provide their recommendations. So uh, those recommendations are noted in the guide relative to the committees that are required to meet and, and deliberate. Um, so those committees have their own process, and their recommendations are, are meant to assist you. Um, Finance Committee will mention briefly how their process went during this all, uh, this year, so we'll do that when we call on them. And with that, I'm going to call on the head table, starting with my right, if you could each introduce yourself. Lisa Mead, Town Council. Casey Warren, Town Administrator. Cassie Sandorell, Assistant Town Clerk. Brenda Hill, Town Accountant. Trevor McDaniel, Select Board and Board of Health. Carolyn Ness, Select Board, Board of Health. Tim Hilchey, Select Board, Board of Health. Mark Brennan, Finance Committee, Capital Improvements Planning Committee Chair. John Pareski, Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. I'd like to take a minute just to note how the Finance Committee works. Uh, we vote on each article separately. Some members of the Finance Committee might vote against an article or no, not vote at all. The conclusion reached by the Finance Committee is based on a majority vote of the members attending the Finance Committee meeting. There has to be at least four members present to reach a conclusion. A, recommended, a recommendation by the Finance Committee is just that, a recommendation. It is not binding. Whether you agree with the Finance Committee's conclusion or not, it is still up to the people at the town meeting to decide whether or not to approve an article. Presently, there is a vacancy on the Finance Committee. It is a voluntary position. Members of the Finance Committee are not elected, nor are they paid. If you want to be a member of the Finance Committee, just go to the Town Hall and let your wishes be known, and they have a process to consider you. A benefit of being a member of the Committee not only helps you not only helping the Town, it also gives you the opportunity to vote twice on an item, once as a Committee member and once at the Town Meeting. Thank you. Uh, Dave Sharp, Finance Committee, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Personnel Committee. Jim Cambius, uh, Finance Committee, and Tilton Library Board. Thank you. I would just add there are several committees in town with vacancies. If anyone is interested, again, stop by the town hall for consideration. Um, there's no better way to assist the town in, in um, understanding the processes and, and being a participant in it. So with that, um, I have a, two initial motions. The first motion is I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of the motion under the article, the moderator may briefly summarize the content of the article to be considered, and further, that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived where the article as printed can, in the opinion of the moderator, be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Second. Basically, the, the motions can be very lengthy, the, um, and this allows the moderator to summarize them briefly and allow you to begin to uh, speak on them more quickly. So all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Casey Warren, town administrator. Second. Second. Uh, again, our town bylaws do not permit non-residents to speak during the meeting, so this does allow uh, individuals who have roles in the town to speak with your permission. So all those in favor? Opposed? That motion also carries. So we're on to the main articles of the evening. Article number one, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town transfer $2,240 from free cash to support a prior year bill for out-of-district placement transportation. Se okay. Mr. McDaniel, briefly. This, uh, a bill that was uh, missed uh, by the close of last year for out-of-district transportation was, we were notified in, in September it hadn't been paid, so we're here today to use free cash to pay the bill. Are there any questions or discussion? All those in favor? 
All those opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Article 2, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town transfer $92,176 from free cash to fund a cash match for a municipal vulnerability grant awarded to the town. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. Uh, the town received for fiscal 24 25 roughly 240000 towards three resiliency projects. One at the elementary school, which is redoing the front entrance of the um, entrance to the school, its rain gardens, landscaping, fencing to reduce the flooding and icing hazards to the entrance of the school. The school is contributing 20, uh, 30000 to the project as well as um, our superintendent is, is Darius Modesto is supervising the project. So um, that is part of the match. Um, the town Leary lot is rain gardens, tree box filters, and a bioswell, which will um, swale, which will reduce the flooding and stormwater for the South Deerfield Village, and also a tree box at the beyond the well, on the north side, beyond the Deerfield Inn. Um, it's to prove the sidewalk there, icing and flooding that happens at. at every rain event. So this is, goes towards our cash um, grant match. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 3, Mr. Hilchey. I move the town transfer $250,000 from free cash to fund design and installation of a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC system for the police department building. Second. Mr. Hilchey? Um, first and foremost, apparently we're, uh, the conditions in the, in the uh, cell portions of the building don't uh, comply to state requirements for the uh, humane treatment of anybody who is unfortunate enough to be in those lockups. So that's, uh, uh, and the, uh, the existing infrastructure is outdated and the air transfer systems within it are at the end of their operational life. And so uh, this will allow um, both our police department and anybody who's in the building to have the proper air, air conditions that they need. Any questions or comments? Yes. Why would the ARPA funds redirect it? Sir, if you can just state your name and your street address. My name is John Petrick. I live at 50 Sugarloaf. Thank you. Mr. Hilchey? I believe that the, the, consider, the opinion of the select board was that um, because the uh, Leary lot has been delayed for so, so long that, and it's being paid for primarily by ARPA funds, that it made more sense to, to do this regular maintenance uh, expense through the regular process of paying for things and that the ARPA funds would be redirected to the Leary lot uh, so that there's no effect on taxpayers. Also, uh, Also, it, it I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So also, um, it, when this project was first put out to bid, um, we got back proposals that were much more than what was anticipated for the expense. And so this combined with um, the fact that the system had to be re redesigned to better comply with state future requirements for not using fossil fuels and so forth. We uh, had a local resident, uh, Jay Curtis, who's an engineer, helped review the process and made recommendations to uh, the, our, our town employed engineer to improve the system. And this is a uh, 250 is more than we expect to pay, but we wanted to have enough money so that if there were any surprises, we could cover them. And this was beyond the amount that ARPA was going to be expended on this in any case. So that's all I can say. Thank you, Mr. Elchie. Any other comments or questions? 
All those in, yes, if you can come up to a microphone, sir. If you do feel like you're going to speak in any article tonight, just feel free to come up to the microphone uh, prior to being called on, and we can keep things moving. Sir, if you can just state your name and your street address, and the mic's ready. Hi, I'm Rod Patton from Gromacki Ave. I've been at several meetings about the campus project, and there was talk of the police station possibly being torn down eventually. Is there any time frame on that? And should we be putting this kind of money into a building that's going to be torn down? Would someone like the select board like to speak? Mr. McDaniel. Yeah, we have no intention of taking the police, police department down. That, that was, um, we have looked at several ways of re redesigning um, the town campus and moving town offices over to the 1888 building. Most of the plans incorporate keeping the police station there. Um, we will be, you know, probably more than five to ten years out before we would think about taking down that that building and the and the AC is needed, you know, before that time. But great question. We ha we all, all have right. that same question in you know deciding this. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed. That motion carries. Article four, uh, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town amend the fiscal 2024 classification compensation plan in accordance with the Deerfield General Bylaws, Chapter 35, Personnel, Article 3, classify, classification compensation plan for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, as printed in the warrant. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. Um, there was an evaluation done of the, our organization of the clerical um, town clerk office, and it indicated a higher level of compensation to our assistant town clerk. This position require, uh, provides vital support to the town clerk's office for functions such as elections, vital statistics, and records management. A formal evaluation of the position was completed and essential functions and performance criteria with a total value came out. The position re review indicated the tasks have increased in the town clerk's office and duties have become more complex. These responsibilities require a higher level of judgment and accountability, particularly for elections, vital statistics, census, and public records. There is a shrinking candidate pool for these positions. So this change improves the town's marketability. Uh, basically, there's just more requirements that the legislature has put on our office. And we are so lucky to have Kate, Kate Cassie with us. And she is wonderful. And we need to keep her. And we reorganized what we would do with the town clerk as a, as a position and cut some of those hours and are shifting that value to the assistant town clerk position. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 5, Mr. Hilchey. I move the town amend the town of Deerfield general bylaws as presented in the warrant with the following amendment to section 86-1F, which was inadvertently omitted from the warrant. Second. Mr. Hilchey. Um, one of the things that uh, Cassie has done with us uh, as she's been serving as the assistant town uh, clerk is to review and try to bring up to date um, some of our fees associated with licensing of dogs as one of them and um, bring them into compliance more with the, the state statutes. Uh, and so the, co um, <clears throat> the cost of dog licenses would be increased in the following manner, from 10 to 15 for intact male and female dogs, from five to 10 for neutered and spayed dogs. The penalty for late fee or failure to license a dog will be staggered as follows. 20 if not licensed between May 1st and July 1st, 35 if not licensed after July 1st, 
and the article at, seeks to add exemption for service dogs for the ADA. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 6, Ms. Dwight. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Right, there we go. Hi. Um, Ms. Dwight, I'm, if you can just yeah, face the, the front of the room. Thanks. Well, these guys I've already talked to <laughs> <laughs> many times. All right, I'll try it like this. Uh, I move that the town authorize the select board to purchase, acquire, or take by eminent domain the parcel of land identified as approximately 2.1 acres, plus or minus, identified in the assessor's records as map 169, lot 14, and owned by Lori Cuvis, and I hope I said your name correctly, by deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, books 6474, page 25, for the amount of $420,000, and to fund said purchase using funds previously approved in Article 11, of the 2023 annual town meeting for land acquisition for purposes of senior housing. Said acquisition of land having been determined to be necessary for the health and welfare of the inhabitants of Deerfield to be used for senior housing purposes with said land to be under the care, custody, and control of the select board. Second. Ms. Dwight. Um, first, I'd like to thank Lori for her wonderful generosity. This opportunity is a once in a lifetime gift. And in this case, it's the only parcel that also enhances the municipal campus. Um, I hope that you all got a handout. We didn't expect quite the turnout, but this is awesome. Um, so I'm not gonna belabor the points on this, but I, I hope that that will help to enlighten you. Um, so, uh, in short, this is the land acquisition approved by the Community Preservation Committee and the town meeting in last spring's annual town meeting, as well as being approved by the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Sorry, I've just got new glasses. <laughs> With this land, we expand the green space and we separate the development of senior housing from the town hall project, all without adding to our real estate taxes. The development process will continue to invite public participation. To that end, as well as posting our weekly meetings and public meetings, Pam Predmore has started a group email to update people. And so please let me know if you want your name added to that. You can find my email address on the website under the senior housing. I am the chair of the ad hoc senior housing committee. I don't know if I said that, sorry. Um, so I hope you'll join me in supporting this land purchase for subsidized senior housing. We really need to get this done. Thank you. Any, any comments or questions? You can come up to a mic and state your Name and your street address. Again, if anyone else anticipates having a comment or question, if they just want to line up at the mic, it's. Yes. Hi, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mark Brennan, 66 Point Road. Um, the one thing I want to say about this is uh, I think it's great that we're finally getting around to senior housing. Uh, my only concern with this is the article as written does talk about acquiring or taking by eminent domain the parcel of land. The, uh, for the people who aren't informed, eminent domain would wash away any kind of restrictions for this deed. So anything that the Diocese of Springfield put on it to retain the structure would be wiped out. Also, I think that <clears throat> this church property that we're talking about here has historical significance. Prior to being St. James, it was a, 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 a church of another denomination. It was in a different location. This church goes way back. My concern with this article is it does not preserve the structure at all. I, I think it's a very noble thing that the town's doing, but 
we are preserving one church and potentially destroying another one of historical significance. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello, Theodore Hanks, uh, 276 River Road. So I got a couple questions. I know in the past, um, the town has made it, well, not really a point, but they've managed to neglect speaking with the abutters. How do the abutters feel about this project? Have you approached the abutters? Have you proposed the information and given it to them? Because I know from the library meetings and everything else, there was a facet of that information that a lot of the community did not know. So my question is, have you spoken with them? Have you met with them? And once again, I agree with the history of the property as well and the fact that it was moved. It would be a shame to tear it down. Um, I know we have a lot of properties in town and we had an awesome property that was the pickle factory where that would have been vastly more space than what we have now to do this whole you know, center or campus or anything else and it was almost more central to the center of South Deerfield. But that's my piece, thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Dwight, if you'd like to address the question. Um, so the question about whether we've spoken with the Butters, we've held three public meetings, including um, standing in front of the library. Um, senior housing meets weekly in a public meeting. And um, as I said, the, and the abutters were notified uh, a few weeks ago um, in anticipation of the ANRAD doing the wetlands delineation. Um, but this has been a public conversation specifically at least since the town meeting, the annual town meeting when this was originally voted on. But also, I, it is a real challenge to keep people informed in town. There's no denying. Um, so that's why uh, Pam has volunteered and has a group email that she's started. So please um, go to the website, find my email, and let me have yours, and we'll make sure you get on that, okay? So has a registered letter been sent to the abutters? You don't need to. I mean, For the ANRAD, yes. That happened a few weeks ago. Mr. Hanks, so I, I, I apologize, but the whole town meeting is not meant to be a dialogue, so um, it's difficult to allow that to happen, but I understand the questions, and hopefully an answer has been provided. Mr. Patton? Rod Patton, 5 Gromechia. This property was sold. We couldn't give it away. The diocese couldn't give it away. Not too many years ago. Finally sold for $200,000. I was against using funds to purchase property. I don't think the town should be in a uh, realtor business, buying property and using it. Um, that parcel is not needed for the senior housing. That's, if you want the apple pie and the ice cream, that's the ice cream. The senior housing campus is going to be where the town hall is and going to be torn down. They're talking about putting a couple buildings there, and then they want a walking path up to this other end and put another senior housing unit up there. Would be nice, but can we afford the $420,000 they want to spend on that? And I think to get our foot in the door with the senior housing where the town hall is going to be torn down would be a start. And I just don't think we need the extra at this point. Things are too tight. Thank you. My Sir? name is Jeremiah Patterson from Seven Ward Avenue. Uh, in the materials, which there weren't enough copies of, but I was able to look over the materials of my neighbor sitting next to, the motion talks about using Community Preservation Act funds, and uh, yet the idea is to tear down a historic church. So my question to you is, how can you possibly consider that preservation of our community? Sir? Yeah, my name's Jason Clark. I'm actually the direct butter of this church, and I just want to put it on record here that I was not notified of this project until about three weeks ago, despite all my best efforts over the last three months to actually get this information from everybody in this town. And that's all I'm going to say. 
Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I apologize. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Tom Ethelis, 592 Greenfield Road in Deerfield. Um, I'm wondering why the town feels that they need to get in the senior housing business in the first place. We have so many other things that we need that we could use that church for. And senior housing to me is not the right thing to put there. Um, we have recreation that is going to need a place to be. Uh, once that field is taken, you need to consider that also. Um, that's just my opinion. I think it's a wrong place for senior housing. I think the town should not be involved in senior. I'm not sure if the other small towns around are involved with senior housing or not. I could be very wrong, but I think that the town has so many other things to do. Why do they want to get involved with senior housing now? Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes. Denise Mason, 297 Lower Road, Deerfield. First of all, I'll answer a couple questions. Um, other towns are in senior housing. O over in Sunderland, they built senior housing for approximately, what, 38 units, yeah. I think? Right. And um, secondly, we're not taking the ball field down. Third, as far as the church is concerned, no one is taking the church down. Nothing has been determined about the church. But I think one of the main things is that, you know, there are two paths that developers can take in doing this. Um, senior housing wants to do is called the Friendly 40B. And so that's where the town, senior housing works cooperatively with the town so that, uh, I'm sorry, the developer, whoever that may be, um, to minimize density, improve setbacks, and blend architectural aesthetics into the neighborhood so they don't do a big monstrosity. If that doesn't happen, a developer can come in and they can do an unfriendly 40B. So that means they can bypass local zoning. The types of developments tend to be very dense, out of character, and don't comply with zoning bylaws. So it's like, it's probably not the best way to go. And we do need senior housing. I think we have 80 people already signed up. 80 that would move in tomorrow, and unfortunately, we have a lot of people in town and a lot of women who are left after their husbands die. Sorry, guys, but that's usually what happens. And there, there are a lot of people that are left in town with these huge homes that they can, they can ill afford. When they move into senior housing, that opens up housing for families to move in. And everyone should know that we have a lack of housing. So for those reasons, I, I think this is a great idea. Thank and you. Ag again, we don't know where it's going to be. It may be, I mean, some of it may be here. We're not going to tear down the police station. We're not going to tear, tear down town hall yet. Thank you. Yeah. Sir? Hi, uh, Dave Fair, uh, 103 Plain Road. Seems like there's a lot of questions in these answers that we don't know yet what we're going to do uh, with, the, uh, with the church and the space, as just mentioned. Uh, my wife and I were married there uh, a number of years ago, so there is some sentimental value for me in the building. That having been said, I don't understand why the town government is involved in buying a building and gifting it to a developer to build senior housing. If it was a good deal, then the developer would just go ahead and deal with it. Instead, we're asking the taxpayers to pay for a housing, as earlier was sa said, that 200,000, the diocese, couldn't even give away the building. So I'm having a hard time, like the previous gentleman, understanding why our town government is in the business of developing uh, real estate. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Kathy Sylvester, um, Hillside Road, North Hillside. I just want to answer that question. Um, as Denise just pointed out, friendly 40B is what this would be. If we don't go for this, any other developer can come in and it won't be so pretty. So we have a choice. We don't, it's not yes or no, it's this or that. So if, you, if we don't have some con control over this, we're going to let somebody come in and just build whatever they want. 
and we can't stop them. So. Thank you. I'd like to answer a question about the process. Yes. And what's intended. Um, the process that we are emulating is what Sunderland did. And Sunderland got nonprofit developer, Rural Development Inc., which is a local um, and community valley, I think, uh, developers. And the process is they want the town to have some skin in the game. So the town provided the land. The town in Sunderland bought a farm and provided the land. The developer then assumed all the costs of building, including preserving the farmhouse in front that they converted to senior housing. Not only did they pay all the development costs, they are now taxpayers. So although it is a nonprofit developer, local, they pay taxes to the town. So that is the intended process. So I wanted people to understand the town will not be managing senior housing. You're absolutely right. We do not want to be in that business. But we must house our older adults because there is a desperate need for affordable, subsidized senior housing in this town. We did the studies that we shared with you for town meetings in the last two years. And um, we are the oldest county in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McDaniel? Just, just to be clear, the CPA money, it, it's what you've directed it to be used for, senior housing. So if you're not spending it on senior housing, I'm not sure what you're going to spend it on. It's, it's designed for housing. So, I mean, this is taxpayer money that we actually got from the state, best rate of return you can ever get on your money is CPA funding, because the state gives you a whole lot more money than we put in, and you need to use it for a portion for housing. And yes, a portion for recreation and a portion for preservation, and, um, but, but this project is specifically for what you've set the money aside for. Whether you agree with it or not, or want the project to happen or not, some project should happen with the money you've set aside for senior housing. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Jason Clark, 81 North Main again. First of all, I'd like to say that I don't think anybody in this room actually does not want to see, see the seniors get housing. That's not what the issue is here. The issue is, is that we have a historic church that we're just finding out that the town wants to purchase, and there's a real good chance it's going to get knocked down. I've seen the plans. I can't imagine that you guys are going to invest the money to actually renovate that and keep it going. The second point I'd like to make is, as far as the... You know, how, many, how much uh, footage do you guys need? I mean, you guys are at 50 feet for frontage. Am I correct? Is the town 50 feet? Can anyone answer that? Or? <laughs> okay, so if a private, if that remains in private hands, I believe it's somewhere in the ballpark of about 150 feet. Am I correct with that or right in the ballpark? I, 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 and, if, yeah, it, I'm give Council or take. Can, I mean, it's under 200 feet. Council is just so, commenting if it's a 40B, if it's a... If, if this remains in the private sector, what I'm saying is I actually trust the private sector a lot more of what they would do with that property than what the town could do with three different parcels of 50 feet. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ilter, do you, do you wish to address that comment or make your own? Yes, I want to... Address Go ahead. So if the town acquires this property, it will be part of a contiguous town-owned lot that has frontage on several streets, um, and it wouldn't even be a subject to the 50-foot rule, I don't believe, but um, so that's all I'll say about that. Thank you. Sir? Uh, Aaron Clark, uh, 155 North Main. So if RDI is going to be managing the tenancy of this development, how do we know that this isn't going to just be a Section 8 housing? Does anyone wish to comment on that? or? Ms. Dwight, if, if you're going to comment specifically on the question that was asked, please. I, I think I, I, could you repeat it? Because I had a hard time hearing what you were asking. So if RDI is managing the tenants of this property, mm -hmm. how do we know this isn't, isn't going to be opened up to anyone with low income or Section 8? This, well, this is for senior housing, period. 
for older adults. Now, a number of our seniors are impoverished, no, that's <laughs> and it's all going to be subsidized uh, for 60 percent, 30 percent, and I think 40 percent AMI, which is area median income. And that's the goal. And it is specifically, senior housing is like the last place you can actually discriminate. I know growing up in Florence, all the senior housing areas that we had now are pretty much low income family housing. So that's what my concern is. But this is being built with tax credits, et cetera, et cetera, you know, state, federal funds, all requiring it being senior housing. Okay. So Thank subsidized, you. yes. Senior, Thank you. Yes. 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 Julie Cavaco from North Hillside Road. Um, I've been following the senior housing for 20, 30 years. I can't even figure out how long it is. And we've had lengthy discussions on how we do not want private companies to come in and overtake land on Mill Village Road and end up turning over to um, Section 8 and that type of housing. We've been very protective of our farmland. Um, the committee has been working tirelessly on this, and um, I think that what they're saying at the very start is important, is that we really need it, and it's in the center of town. It follows the um, plan we had where we want development in the center of town. We don't want it spread out. Um, we don't want to you know, uh, tax the other areas, and we don't lose our farmland. Um, the most important thing to know is that they're very good at listening to what we, we want, what's important. So I would say attend those meetings, write those letters, and make sure that you oversee um, your input in making the project be as successful as it can while preserving the building if that's important to you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Ilchi. Just one final thing. Um, I wanted to point out about Sanderson Place, which is in the center of Sunderland. Um, one component of that project was the a family farmhouse. Um, the developer, RDI, which is the one that we've been speaking about, converted the family farm uh, bu historic buildings into three units of senior housing. And then they built a larger building in the back of the property, which is tastefully situated. So um, as to what would happen to the rectory building or the church, um, the, the Sanderson Place uh, development also included common areas, which would be a logical thing to do with a church that's falling down, is to con convert it into a community use building for the, the residents of the senior housing. So um, as, as Lily pointed out, no decisions have been made about this, but uh, there's no decision to tear down either the rectory or the church. There's been a motion to call the question. That means that the debate would stop at this point. We would take a vote on whether to call the question. So what that means is right now you're only voting on whether you want to vote on the question and not hear any further debate. So all those in, it, 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 all those in favor of the motion to call the question. Opposed. So that has passed by two-thirds majority. So at this point, we would move directly to the vote on the article. Does anyone want to have it reread, or is everyone comfortable voting at this point? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? So that motion has carried by two-thirds. The motion has passed. Article 7. Yes. Yep. There's been a call for a count. Uh, I do not have to allow that, but I will. So if you, all those in favor of the motion, I'll need to physically count the vote. So um, if we can, if you want to just do it by section, it's easier for me and for you. So if you just can, I'll t tell the next section when to go. So if you can just hold up your blue ballot if you don't have one. If, um, okay. Give me one moment. This section's fine, thank you. Middle section?
You're off set. Thank you. The front table. Those opposed? Just do it by section, it's fine. Middle section? Thank you. Front table. The table? Yes. Opposed? Twenty percent are opposed, and the motion carries by two thirds. Article seven, Miss Mason. I move that the town amended zoning bylaws is set forth in the town meeting handout, which was on file with the town clerk. Second, Miss Mason. Okay. Good evening. I'm Denise Mason, Planning Board Chair. Over the course of the last six months, the Planning Board met with Peggy Sloan from Franklin Regional Council of Governments to help revise our Chapter 179 bylaws. We held a public information on September 11th, and we held a public hearing on October 2nd to address these changes. Sorry I didn't see many of you there. <laughs> we are presenting the revisions at three, as three separate warrant articles, 7, 8, and 9. They're separate because the major changes occur in numbers 8 and 9, and you'll find the summary in your booklet. Is that all the presentation on Article 7? Yep. Any questions or comments on Article 7 as presented in the booklet? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries by two thirds majority. Article 8, Ms. Mason? All right. I move the town amend the zoning bylaws to update section 3600, conservation subdivision design, as set forth in the town meeting handout and which is on file with the town clerk. Second. Ms. Mason? Okay, my comments are that um, so I think someone had asked this before, do we need to do this? No, but what's, what's, what's good about doing this is that instead of having a, um, uh, a permit, it would be a site plan review, which is much simpler. We're really trying to encourage more open space and, um, you know, in a development, have it more of a cluster, as we were talking about in senior housing, so it's not spread out. So it really stays in character with the town. So that's, that's basically it. And, and with this, I mean, there's a lot of work on this. That's why it's a separate bylaw. And the, we, our bylaws were sorely outdated. And I asked a couple of people. I asked Ms. Ness. I also asked um, Casey Warren, our town administrator, when was the last time our bylaws were updated? And no one remembers. So it's been a long time coming. So Peggy Sloan did, I mean, she did the lion's share of the work, and she did a fabulous job on updating these bylaws. Thank you. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the article as presented? Opposed? That motion also carries by two thirds majority. Ms. Mason? All right. I move the town amended zoning bylaws to update section 4300 floodplain district bylaw as set forth in the town meeting handout and which is on file with the town clerk. Second. Ms. Mason? Okay, this, this is really important. That's why it's separate. Um, these, we need to meet all state and federal guidelines for our floodplain. I don't think anyone here would disagree after the delightful summer that we had and all the flooding. So if we don't, don't adopt this, anyone who needs or wants flood insurance won't be able to get it. So I don't think we really have a choice. But we do. Well, we all, do. All we those do. In, any questions or comments? Make the right choice. All those in favor? 
Opposed? That motion also carries by a two-thirds majority. Article 10, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $5 million for the extraordinary road and sidewalk reconstruction and repairs and for all the costs related and incidental thereto, including engineering and design, and to meet said appropriation, the town treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to general laws, section 44, cha uh, chapter 44, excuse me, section 7, 1. And, and, or any other enabling authority, and to issue the bonds or notes of the town, therefore, and further, that the approved approval thereof, hereof shall not take effect until the town votes to exempt from the limitation on total taxes imposed by General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 21C, a proposition two and a half override, the amounts required to pay the principal of the, and the interest on the borrowing authorized by this article. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. The, real, the reality is that we do not budget uh, a line item for climate change and storm damage that we incur during the year. Deerfield sustained unprecedented uh, road and infrastructure damage after the flooding uh, this summer and the July 10th storm and the July 21st storm. It's more, cumulatively more than we've had in the two decades in my experience prior to this. The town received authorization to spend 4.7 million from the Department of Revenue for repairs on, uh, on work done or will be done uh, by this winter. We will be over $4 million. The approval of this article will help Deerfield maintain a good bond rating by not having to borrow on an emergency basis and obviously not disruptive to our local government so that we can continue to pay our bills and operate. As you know, this article passes the select board will call a special election to, compu um, to complete the borrowing approval process in December. If we know we're getting money by the state from the state at that point, we will cancel the cost of the special election and we will rescind the borrowing at our annual town meeting. The, the issue is we're not really sure when the state is going to reimburse us for money that we've already uh, or in the process of spending. So the additional nine to $12 million of damage that we um, have also incurred that can be accomplished in the next three to five years will come from grants that we will be applying for, uh, like the brick grant for the over a million two to a million five to finish Pine Nook Road, um, to do Little Meadow Road, to do certain areas in town that can wait a little bit. Um, restoration is, is really not what we want. We want to try to adapt and mitigate for the future. So this is, as we're doing this, we're not building back the same level. We're trying to make sure that we can um, manage what intense rain events that we have in the future as well. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented. Opposed. That motion carries by a two-thirds majority. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Everybody. Article 11, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town accept by gift, eminent domain, or otherwise require the road, roads known as Snowberry Circle and Greylock Lane and to accept same as public ways as more fully set forth on the plan entitled Street Acceptance Plan, the condominiums at Sugarloaf by SVE Associates, October 5th, 2023, and to accept any easements as shown thereon and to authorize the select board to enter into any agreements or accept any deeds in order to effectuate same with acceptance and designation as the public way effective upon approval of all final documents and recording of the same in the registry of deeds. Mr. McDaniel. Thank you. Uh, so the purpose is to accept the roads um, built as part of the condominium development off of Sugarloaf Street. Um, uh, the roads were built uh, to the Mass DOT and uh, Deerfield Code, Chapter 264, Sections 
uh, 4200 to 4270 standards with the intent to have the town accept them as public ways once the subdivision was complete. The planning board and the public works superintendent spent considerable time evaluating the roads relative infrastructure, which resulted in approval of the project earlier this year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just by the way of disclosure, uh, I had represented the developer who did the condominium project, not involved in the vote tonight or any portion of it, um, but did want to disclose that to all of you before you ask any questions. And if there is anything that feels that it's not comfortable, um, council would step in. So any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Matt Russo, 28 Captain Lathrop Drive. Hopefully it's a simple question. Who's going to be responsible for clearing the sidewalks in that development? Is it going to be town responsibility or the individual residents? Mr. McDaniel? Uh, I don't believe the town has a bylaw for the, um, um, I, for the sidewalk clearing. I think that's a responsibility of the owners, um, whoever owns the, the property in front of it. Um, and that's, that's the case in all of our roads at the moment. I know since I've been on, we've discussed this several times. Like we do clear some, some sidewalks, but we're not obligated to clear them. I know when I lived in Greenfield, it was our responsibility to clear the sidewalk in front of our road. Um, uh, so, so I, I think the responsibility is the town to clear the roads, not the sidewalks. Is Mr. Scarborough here or by chance? No, okay. I just wanted to be clear because I know in my history of living in yes. this town, there have been all kinds of debates over who's responsible and <laughs> there have been different stories provided by different folks. So yep. if we're gonna accept the roads, I just want to be clear going forward, the residents will be responsible for clearing their own sideways, yes. sidewalks. Thank you. Yep. Hello. Good evening, Kevin Scarborough, 11 West Street. I'm also a highway superintendent. Uh, presently, right now, we are responsible for all the sidewalks in town. <clears throat> um, it would be nice if that could be alleviated, um, but the way it would stand right now, those two roads, <clears throat> excuse me, would abide by the same rules that we abide by now, which is the town would be responsible for the removal of the snow on the sidewalks. There you have it. There's your, there's your superintendent. I'm sorry. I said, there you have it. There's your superintendent. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yeah. All those in We've favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Before you all run out the door, I do want to thank FCAT for uh, helping us out this evening. You do an awesome job, as thank always. You, Thank you all for coming. Appreciate your time. And this meeting is dissolved. <laughs>